Hi, my name is Sunny Dugyeon Hwang. I'm a filmmaker and artist in New York City. Hi, I'm Joy McKinney. I'm a photographer and a performance art artist here in New York City. And my name is John Flynn. I'm a filmmaker and film critic based in New York City. We are going to be at Art Mora for Invisible Shine by artist Daru Jung Hyung Kim. Wow, that was yeah. What I get for living in Korea for a month. Are you guys ready to check it out? Let's go. It's better be good, Sonny. Hi, my name is Daru Jonghyang Kim. Uh, Daru is my artistic name, and I, I've been here in New York as a working artist for the past, uh, I lived here for 39 years, but I've been active artist for the past 30 years. So, um, can you briefly intru uh, introduce about uh, today's opening? Today's uh, opening is uh, involves my current work that I've been working on. Some of them take two years and some of them took a year. And the theme is, I'm very interested in nature versus, uh, you know, culture. And that's been my ongoing theme. But this particular piece is, are involved with the, uh, I was inspired by the book by, um, Pablo Neruda's uh, Winter Garden. So it's uh, to me, it's like it, it, that was the starting point, but it, it goes from like I, the, the whole work is about like between the winter and a spring, and then maybe went over to the spring. And so it, it, it symbolized that kind of change of season and the time. I know you referenced Pablo Neruda in the work, but I wanted to go back to maybe your older work and ask you about referencing Buddhist meditations, the lotus flower, like the prayer beads. Is that a part of your work now? Not so much, but you know, still the, uh, the sort of some sort of um, idea of the flower as a symbol. Not, it, it's more of a, to me, in the beginning, older work is more, has a more um, precise symbolism, but now it's like even the symbolism of the flower is very, in a very loose, abstract form. Uh, and then I like to kind of like do the process to me is very important of the repetition and then uh, drawing and then erasing and then drawing back some other traces. It's almost kind of, to me, it's like, in that sense, it might be, you can say it still has that kind of life and meditation and you, you finding your own process and, and result from it. It's, so I would say it still kind of has some meaning to it. My last question would be, um, do you, take this process into a more public installation or is it out how do you merge the work outside of and off of a canvas but public work it's more about the space the architecture and a surrounding and a most important is the general public so I kind of make it more fun more graphic and more bright color and that's how that is my starting point and and I wanted to, it's kind of like delicate because I don't want it to make it like oh that, that's so different from your painting. I mean, I, I wanted to have the elements of flowers and sunburst and colorful, but I, you know, as you can see, my painting is more abstract and sort of more po poetic. But in my public work, I want to make it a little more, uh, more designy, you know, that's how I cross over. Consistent with the fluidity, right? Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit more analytical uh, in the paintings themselves um, for what we see at face value. So um, as I was observing these paintings, I'm noticing a very sense uh, of a sense of calmness, and that's through your choice of colors, and more specifically, your very muted colors. Um, even though a lot of them are very bright and vivid, they still invoke a sense of calmness. But also within the paintings themselves, there's a lot of sporadicism going on um, in the painting itself. So why the blend of calm and sporadic? Because I like the idea of like sort of 
uh, all overness of the picture. And when I went crossover from like more the lotus versus you know the the geometric form, uh, the past ten years I was trying to combine it. So, uh, but somehow even though I combine it sporadically, it gives the sense of like some as you uh, asked me earlier, sense of like landscape or the water or seascape kind of feeling and I tried to capture the sensation of it and that's why I kind of put these elements all over the place and you, you know here here it's like sort of like the water uh, pattern right yes. and this is kind of stoppers I use this kind of almost like pre-existing symbolism and I combined that uh, and as a background but yet what I wa wanted to challenge is at the end, it it come across as, wow, it feels like some kind of landscape, you know, aside from all these little, little detail elements of the thing, because to me, that is kind of challenge as an abstract artist. Today's abstract painting is like, how do I combine pre-existing patterns and symbols and, and use it my own way, and at the end come across and finish a painting that is uh, evoke something like let's say you know underwater or uh, you know or something like you're walking through the woods and uh, and it's all tangled up and I imagine that kind of thing and then it's a full moon and then you suddenly woke up and you're like looking at the garden and then you see something magical and how do you capture that so under base is like that kind of thing but my uh, visual language is this kind of you know the patterning of these symbols what are your feelings on nature and um, I guess to tie it into the question because you were speaking about what we were talking about beforehand um, is it just my interpretation that all these paintings are through the perspective of looking up through underwater or is that something that's a recurring theme in this series and if so why oh the current theme is not so much underwater current theme is like you're you know for instance uh, when you look at the title of that piece the first piece over there that when you look walk through the springtime there's a like barked peeled off and there's the there's the uh, feeling of regrowth and stuff so I I kind of look at you know I look at the poetry or some some sensation when I'm walking through the forest and I kind of try to capture that so but I think that for me uh, for the public if you feel like oh I feel like it's under the water that's great because you felt something right. <laughs> I'm not trying to necessarily try to say oh you must feel this underwater thing <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. So you could say this is kind of like almost like a sensory overload as if you're trying to combine all of nature and put it onto one panel. So that kind of explains the sporadicism of it because you're taking so much of nature and uh, combining it onto such a small palette. Well, granted, this isn't small, but in the grand scheme of things of nature, you know, this is of like a dot compared to the rest of it. Okay. Contributing my own interpretation of the the way I see nature overall. And I just want to quickly just comment about your uh, incredible use of color. You've used, uh, for example, on the painting on the far side, you have, it's quite abundantly good, it's a blue painting, but yet you have moments of like orange and red in there, but yet they don't feel intrusive or incorrectly placed. And I just want to, you know, just compliment you and say that like your use of color in all of these paintings are fantastic. Oh, thank you. I would like to pride myself as a super colorist. Because <laughs> color is very important. Because you have to look at the world in a very colorful way. And how do I, how do I express the beauty of the world in a, in a most delicate but contrasting way so I love that piece because to me that gives like without overloading anything you're creating this like contrast and you're like magical kind of thing like oh maybe it's like little little glimpse of light peeking through some hole or something you know there you go yeah, thank you so much for today and congratulations thank you okay thank you I 
I've known Daru's work for a little bit now because I'm really good friends with her daughter, but this is the first time I've you know, kind of seen it in a gallery setting and, it, and it's, it's really beautiful. It's beautiful stuff. Yeah, it's really beautiful. That's all I have to say. Sorry. I said two sentences. Uh, I have one more sentence to say. No, I love the color. I love the colors. The artwork is beautiful. We actually have known Daru for a long time. Um, and we've always loved her work. It's very light and organic and beautiful. Yeah, I guess I'd second that. But to add on to that, I think the layers are really wonderful and the depth is amazing. And uh, the range of colors she has in this particular show is really beautiful. Watercolor, uh, this is really beautiful. Um, tonight's been great. Uh, the art is amazing and it's uh, really refreshing to see such a beautiful color palette and uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. It's my mom's work. <laughs> it's her mom's work, but it's like being in like a mental candy shop. <laughs> I'm glad to meet you, a, a lot of art lovers and uh, passionate people here, and uh, congratulations. Daru is a, a very committed and dedicated artist. Kim Jong-yeon 작가님 작품은 예전부터 제가 항상 뭐 마음이 힘들거나 뭔가 힐링의 기분을 느끼고 싶을 때 보았던 작품인데요. 이번에 개인전하신다는 소식을 듣고 봄과 너무 어울리는 작품들이 생각나서 오게 됐고요. 역시나 기대 이상으로 항상 좋은 작품 보여주셔서 너무 기쁜 마음 그리고 치유받는 기분 느끼고 가게 되었습니다. 앞으로도 좋은 전시 자주 하셨으면 좋겠습니다.